What's up everybody? We're back with part three of the map kit tutorial. Now, whether I take this past part three, uh, I probably will eventually, but for now, this three part mini series will be it. So if you haven't seen episodes one or two, uh, what we covered was here in episode one, we did user location. Episode two, we used some reverse geocoding to get an address based on where you move the map. And now here in episode three, we're going to get directions from the user's location to the selected location uh, after you reverse geocoded it. So if you haven't caught those episodes, links will be in the description if you wanna build this project out from scratch. However, if you're just looking for the directions part of it, uh, this is the video for you. Let's dive in. So here we are in the project. Uh, as always, I do a review of the starter project. I'm not gonna do an in-depth one because like I said in the intro, this is part three. So hopefully you've been following along one and two. And if you do feel lost on what's going on in this project, there's two videos about it, go check it out. So main storyboard, just got a map view here with a label at the bottom. On the map screen here on the left, this is where we basically do uh, everything. Uh, we are, you know, basically getting our permissions using uh, all this stuff here, you know, check location authorization. Again, this was part one. And then we see our uh, reverse geocoding here. This was part two. And uh, yeah, that's basically it for the starter project. We're gonna start uh, implementing some get direction functions here. Uh, that'll go in here somewhere. But that is the gist of the starter project. Again, check out the videos if you feel a little lost. So again, what we're going to do is get directions from the current user's location to a location we select on the map. And we're gonna do that with a, you know, go button to get the directions. So let's go ahead and actually create that function. Uh, func get directions. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, and type out some stuff here and we'll come back and explain it. Okay, so we're gonna do this in steps here. So the first thing we need to check when we get directions is we need to make sure we actually have the user's location because remember that's our starting point. And location manager dot location, which is the user's location, uh, is an optional because sometimes we may not have that for you know various reasons. So uh, when the user taps go to get directions, which let's go ahead and do that now, you know get directions. Uh, when they tap that and we call our get directions functions, again, the first thing we want to check, do we even have the user's location? If not, we're going to pop up an error, let them know and just return and get out of the function. So this is just pretty standard error checking. And the next thing, whoops, I need an else. It's typing too fast. Um, yeah, so, so guard that location equal the location dot coordinate else pop up the error and return. Next, we need to create a request. So for MK directions, uh, you need to take in a request and we're gonna dive into that in a little bit. But again, before I do that, let's go ahead and type out some code. This code is going to be in a uh, helper function because it is a, a large chunk of code. And as a rule of thumb, I don't like my functions to be longer than 20 lines or so. So uh, with this, all, you know, generating this request, it made the function pretty long. So I'm abstracting all the request generation out to its own helper function, which I'm gonna type out now and uh, we'll come back and discuss. All right, so let's talk through this code we just wrote here, uh, 101 to 113. So again, the function signature is create directions request because that's what we're doing. Let's go ahead and call that here now, create directions request. And it does take in a coordinate, which is our location up here that we're guarding against. So just call that location. There we go. So now we have a request up there, back to here. Uh, so like I said, it, it takes in a location and it returns a uh, mkdirections.request that we're generating. So basically a request needs a source, which is the you know starting location and then a, a destination. So what we do here for our destination is we're grabbing the center of the map because remember that is where we, um, you know, the pin is and that's where we're updating the address. That's how our app works. We're, we drag the map around, find the place we wanna go to, hit the go button and we get directions. Uh, you'll see it in action later. Uh, so the destination coordinate uh, is the center of the map view. Again, we use our get center location. This is from a, a previous part that we wrote this helper method. And uh, so now we have starting location, which is a uh, MK place mark. Uh, MK place marks need a coordinate and the coordinate we passed in is the location from uh, you know our user location. Cause again, we're starting at the user location. Uh, for destination, we uh, pass in the coordinate we just created up here on line 102. So again, uh, starting location is our user's location. Destination is the coordinate at the center of the map, which is where our pin is. So now that we have our starting uh, location and destination, the rest of the request is pretty straightforward. So we create a request, uh, which is an mkdirections.request. Uh, we'll go ahead and instantiate that. And then a request has a source, which again is the, uh, it's an MK map item, which you pass in a place mark, which is our starting location that we created up here and needs a destination. Again, MK map item that is a place mark takes in the destination that we created right there. 
And then the next thing we put uh, plug in, which is kind of optional, is the transport type. So uh, right now we're passing in automobile. We're just kind of hard coding this. I'll just pull up the options real quick. Let me slide this up here. Uh, so instead of automobile, if you just do dot, you can see in the drop down we get any automobile, transit, which is public transportation, uh, or walking. Again, we're putting in automobile here, but if you were building out a fully featured app, you would probably have a, a segmented control, a switch, or some sort of button where they select whether they're walking in a car. Uh, or using public transit, and that will dictate the map. And then finally, we are uh, requesting alternate routes. You've seen this in maps before, like if you were to do San Francisco to LA, there's gonna be alternate routes that a user can take and they can pick one. So uh, having this as true, it will show the alternate routes. And then we're just returning this request. So again, up here, uh, we are creating a request and then we're just calling this helper method uh, that is going to go ahead and return this request that we just created down here. And again, like I said, the whole reason we're creating this request is because in order to create an instance of MK directions, uh, it takes in a request. So let's go ahead and create that here. Let directions, I need to spell correctly, <laughs> directions equal MK directions. And then again, if you go ahead and start instantiating it, you see it takes in a request. So we just created the request right above here. So that is what we're going to pass in. Now let's take a look at MK directions in the documentation. And you can just get a quick overview. Uh, basically, you're asking Apple server to, servers to provide walking or driving directions for the route, which you specify based on the request. Again, like we, we talked about. Uh, after making the request, MapKit delivers the results asynchronously uh, to the completion handle that you provide. You can also get the estimated travel time to the route. So again, if I'm unfamiliar with a class or haven't used it before, I always dig into it and read the overview just to get a high level of what it does. And then I usually scroll down and start looking at some of the uh, methods on it and some of the properties. Uh, like here you see you can you know, get the ETA, you know, calculate the estimated time of arrival kind of stuff. You can cancel the request. Uh, so again, I always just kind of get an overview of a new class that, I, that I'm working with here. So that is the MK directions class. And again, you can see in the initializer, it takes in a request. Now we're getting to the meat of this. Let's actually, on our directions object that we created with this request, let's go ahead and start calculating the directions. So I'm gonna type out some code and we'll come back. All right, so let's talk about these lines of code here, 100 to 108. So again, directions.calculate. Here we're, now that we have our directions objects with the route, we're gonna calculate that. Uh, gives us back a response and an error. So here on the comment, you know, I, I don't wanna do error handling in these tutorials because they're, they're long enough as it is. So just kind of pushing that to the side. So if you get the error back, handle that. And then same thing here, we're gonna guard to make sure we get a response back, uh, else we're going to return and show them you know, an alert saying, hey, we, we don't have a response. Uh, so once all that comes back good, and like we have a response, now we can uh, iterate through our response.route. So our response is going to be an array of routes. The reason it is an array of routes is because, remember down here on line uh, 121, we requested alternate routes. Now we get back multiple routes potentially, so we wanna uh, make sure we're iterating through all those routes. If we only get one route back, we get one route back. But uh, this handles the case where we get more routes. So the first line here, mapView.addOverlay, this is where we're adding like the, the blue line that follows the route that you're going to do. And we're gonna add the route.polyline. What is a polyline? Again, into the documentation, let's check it out. Uh, so a polyline is an instance of MK polyline. Again, click into there. And it is a shape consisting of one or more connected uh, line segments. So it says the points are connected end to end in the order that you provide them. So basically it's just the, the line on the map that you're going to add here. So we're adding that polyline from, from our uh, starting location to our destination. And then what we're gonna do with the map view is set visible map rect. So we're gonna resize the view of the map and we wanna tell it you know, how big do we want it. We want it to be the polyline dot bounding map rect. So basically what this is, is this is going to be, it's going to fit the entire route in the screen. So if you're going from San Francisco to Florida, you're gonna see the entire United States in the screen because it's gonna show the whole route. If you're going just from San Francisco to LA, you're only gonna see you know, that bit of the, of the country. So basically this adjusts the map size to fit the entire route so you can see the whole thing. And we'll see some examples of that when we run it. Now, in order for these overlays to show up, we do need a delegate method here down in our uh, MK map view delegate. So right here with our region did change, we're gonna go ahead and add another delegate method. Uh, let me scroll up here so you can see. 
Okay, so let's walk through this method real quick. Uh, when we want the render, uh, we just create a renderer, which is the MK polyline renderer, which we just talked about the polyline. And this is the overlay, which is what is on our map view, which is the polyline we created up there. And then now that we have our renderer object, we can go ahead and uh, adjust it if we want. So we can set the stroke color to blue, red, green, you know, create your own color, whatever you want to do here. And then we're just going to go ahead and return the renderer. So with all that being said, we should be ready to run this and have the basic functionality. There's a little cleanup we have to do once we get the basic functionality done, but uh, this should work again for the basic functionality. Now I'm going to go ahead and run this on my actual device and I recommend you do the same uh, just because the simulator, at least mine, is real, real rough with the map, map view and then like, you know, moving it around. So let's go ahead and run this on my phone. So here we are up near the ferry building in San Francisco. That's not my address, so don't really care if you see that. Uh, let's go to Half Moon Bay. It's here. It's nice this time of year. So uh, go ahead and hit go and you'll see our routes pop up in a little bit. And now you see we have alternate routes and that is because we requested that. If you didn't request that, you would just get one. And here we are, this blue line is uh, our polyline that we just talked about. Again, you can change the color of that if you like. And our screen resized to fit the whole route into the map view. Our label's hiding the bottom part. That's a, that's our poor UI there. Um, so as you can see, like if I did a more extreme example, like let's go down towards, you know, let's go down to LA a bit, hit go, and you will get our route. And there we go, and uh, see it resize the screen to go see San Francisco to LA. But you see here, we have a bit of a mess. This is what I talked about we had to clean up. We still have our Half Moon Bay route on there. And then if I go like up towards the Golden Gate Bridge, you know, now we have that route on there. Now our map is getting like really, really, really messy. Wow, that's a weird alternate route. Where are we going? Wow, okay, anyway, got distracted there. Uh, so let's clean that up. Let's talk about that. All right, so for this, we're gonna create another helper function. Uh, so I'm gonna do some typing as usual, and we'll come back. All right, so let's walk through this little helper function we wrote here uh, called reset map view with new directions. Uh, so the first thing we wanna do is remove all those existing uh, overlays. There's some other stuff we wanna do as well, but that's the main thing. So uh, map view has a function called remove overlays, and it takes in an array of overlays. Now, luckily, map view has a property uh, called overlays, which is basically an uh, array of existing MK overlays. So any overlay we've already put on there, we're just removing them all. So this gets rid of all the, the overlays, which is are the, uh, the polylines, the blue lines over there. Cool. Now, this is more of a performance thing. So we want to be able to, just like the reverse geocoder I talked about in the beginning, we want to be able to cancel that request so we just don't have a bunch of directions requests uh, stacked up. We're, we're doing the same thing here. We're keeping an array of, of all these directions every time get directions gets called. So we're going to actually go ahead and call this right here. So uh, reset map with, and this is where we pass in the new directions we just created here on line 99. Now, let me walk through this a little bit. Uh, Full disclaimer, this could probably be written a little better with some refactoring so it's not, uh, you know, so it's more clear. But basically, uh, what we're doing here, again, removing the overlays. Uh, I have a directions array, whoops, that I created up here, uh, basically just a blank array of directions. And I don't, by the way, I don't like the names directions array, but I already have something called directions right here, so it was confusing. Uh, naming's hard. So anyway, we're appending our directions to that array. And then we're iterating over that array and using dot map. If you're not familiar with dot map, that basically just does something to every uh, element in the array. So let's say you have an array of numbers. You want to multiply them all by three. You would just map dollar sign times three. Everything in the array gets multiplied by three. So in this case, our array of directions, we are just canceling them all if there's anything in here. So that's it, that's all the code. Let's walk through it real quick so you can have a more full understanding because we did kind of jump around in the order. Uh, so I'll walk through our get directions here. Uh, we're making sure we have the user's location right here. Uh, if we don't, we're just showing an error. We create a request and here we configure that request with the starting location, uh, destination, you know, automobile or walking, do you want alternate routes or not? And uh, so we create our directions based on that request. And then here we're resetting the map view. So again, this happens every time get directions gets called. If you, if you, if you remember, get directions gets called every time the go button gets tapped. So uh, the reason we're doing this here before we do our calculation, because this is done asynchronously, is adding we're adding the new directions to our directions array and then iterating through that array and canceling any pending requests. Uh, I want to be very clear. Let's go back down to cancel and go into the documentation here. This doesn't just flat out cancel the directions. Uh, yeah, it says canceling a pending request. So 
basically it only cancels it if it gets stuck here in this asynchronous block like maybe the network is horrible it can't get the directions and it's it's stuck here it's taking forever that is a pending request and we're only canceling those so if this has already returned the directions we want it's not going to get canceled and then onto this calculation. So we're calculating the directions based on the uh, request we created. We get a response or an error. Uh, we wanna make sure we have a response. So what we're doing, show an error if not. And then uh, our response has an array of routes. And again, this handles the alternate routes. Uh, if you don't have alternate routes to true, you're just gonna get one back. So there's no need to iterate uh, over it. But anyway, so for everyone, we're gonna add the overlay, which is our polyline. And then we're going to reset the size of our map view to show the entire route. And that's basically it. So let's go ahead and run this on our device again to see the new cleanup version, and that'll be that. All right, so here we are in San Francisco again. Let's just go somewhere fairly close. Hit go. There you go. We get our, our alternate routes here. Let's go up towards, you know, the Golden Gate Bridge. Hit go. And we get our route, and as you can see, we cleared up the map uh, a little bit. Now, another thing I want to point out, I want to get a little crazy. Let's go ahead and go to Miami here. Uh just to show you get the directions, but it does take a little longer because imagine all the steps and all the directions it's taking to get to you know Miami. So you hit go and it takes a little bit. And I wanna showcase this because remember we canceled our pending direction request. So imagine if the user just kept going back and requesting all these crazy you know locations, you would back up all those requests and probably hit your, your throttle limit and get errors and stuff. So we wanna restrict uh, from doing that by canceling existing requests if they make a new one. So, but you can see on the map, we have all of our steps from San Francisco to Miami. Uh, so yeah, that is all the directions there. Go to San Jose. Uh, well, we're not even in a the city. There we go. Hit go and we get our directions there and the view shifts. Now, uh, you've probably seen in uh, other map apps where they actually list out the instructions, like go down this street for three miles, turn left on this street for five miles, you know, that kind of step-by-step -step instructions that you've probably seen before. Uh, now you can see how I have typed out here, you already have that information. So I'm not gonna go ahead and do that because I feel like it's just gonna turn into a table view tutorial. If you're familiar with table views, you basically just need an array of information to create your table view. Uh, well, I wanna show you every route here in your response.routes has something called steps. So here I said, let steps equal route.steps. Uh, and if we click into steps here, uh, there, you can see this, uh, you know, MK route step object, you can see what it has. So it has uh, an instructions property, a notice property, so instructions is the written instructions for following the path. The notice is just any other additional information, uh, the distance. So you have all the information you need to create that already in an object, in an array. So again, if you want me to do a tutorial, leave a comment if you really wanna see it. But again, I it's just gonna turn into, here's how to make a table view type tutorial. Uh, so I don't really know if there's much value there, but if you wanted to show the instructions, Here's how you would do it. You already have the array you need. You just got to put that in a table view. There you go. Now you know how to get directions from MapKit. Uh, if you like what I'm doing here, consider subscribing. I put out new videos and tutorials all the time. See you in the next one.